Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is a best of five series that just so happens to be the finals of this week's American version of the ESL Open Cup. Now, you can say many things about the ESL Open Cup, but usually at least these days, the Korean as well as the European finals are almost a little bit predictable. I feel like over the last couple of months in particular, it's been Clem versus Max Max in the European finals finals every single time but this is the american variant now americans of course do sign up for this tournament too but it just so happens to be that usually it's koreans and europeans that make it to the finals and well it really just depends on who decides to sign up so game number one in today's best of five series in this very elaborate intro in the top right hand corner of the map raduset station playing with the blue terran scvs we have none other than Byun. And his opponent in the opposite corner with the red Protoss probes. We're looking at none other than Max Pax's main Nexus. Max Pax versus Pion. I mean, that should be a really fun match. In my mind, and maybe this is a little bit blasphemous, okay? I don't even know if I can say this. But in my mind, in the games that I've seen both of these guys play, and Pion has been really, really good, I actually think Max Pax is the favorite. Yeah! Is that, is, am I even allowed to say that? Especially if it's a Protoss versus Terran? Max Pax's PVT has looked really, really solid. Better micro than anybody else out there. And if I were to be a betting man, I think it's not a huge advantage. It's probably like 55 versus like 45, right? I don't think the advantage is overwhelming, but there's no denying that Max Pax has been looking really strong. Interestingly enough, we find ourselves, yeah, no, you can't get in there. Interestingly enough, we find ourselves on this map in game number one, which is a little bit funky. I've talked about Radoset Station in the few games that I've casted on it so far, and... Well, basically, in case you've missed any of my previous uploads, long story short, the map is weird. Usually, yep, players decide to play quite greedily on here because of the fact that you have a very nice and easy to take third base. It's tucked away. There's a mineral wall. Oh, sorry about that little SCV. There's a mineral wall as well as a debris wall right over here. It's blocked by just a couple very skinny minerals, and you can mine those out easily. Those are just, well, I guess in location over there to make sure that, especially Zerg players, I guess, don't just open up Triple Hedge before a spawning pool every single time. But even then, ooh, we still see it happen every once in a while. Now, this is interesting, and you know what? I actually kind of like it. Max Pax not playing a very economically focused game here. Instead, he decides to Dark Templar rush Bjorn. Now, there's a very good chance that Bjorn indeed is going to be playing greedy, because that's what he likes to do. And because of that, there's a very good chance that he's also not going to be prepared for early game Dark Templar. So, Max Pax going for every Silver Leagues player favorite build. Why did we shade in that direction, by the way? Yeah, now the Adept is going to die. Oh, at least she accepted death right there at the very end. She just stopped walking. Anyways, this is a, a very popular build on... Well, I guess really at every stage of StarCraft 2, but usually at this level, it falls off quite a bit. A Dark Templar rush. Obviously, you can still follow this up as well with, like, Archon juggling, right? That's something we see every once in a while. Not usually particularly popular against Terran, but still definitely something you can go for. So even though it's an uncommon build, it is something that can certainly catch Terran players off guard. And so far, um, while well, we have an engineering bay coming, excuse me, we have an engineering bay coming, so in order to go for a missile turret, which is a detector, you do need to have an engineering bay. Are we gonna build them though? Because I'm a little bit afraid that this NG bay is really just here to start up the plus one infantry weapons, and that's about it. Dark Templar, by the way, have already been warped in, and they're gonna be sent on over right now. Okay, well, Bjorn may have figured out that something is a little bit fishy, maybe just seeing the lack of stuff from the opponent. Uh, looks like we actually, uh, yeah, we're gonna just drop off a single one over here in the natural expansion of the Terran. That missile turret is gonna finish up here momentarily. Dark Templar now also going to town in a main base. And right from the start, I really do like this build here from Mr. Max Vax. Killing eight SCVs, I mean, it isn't game-ending damage, but at this level, that's really the best you can hope for. Bjorn was pretty well prepared for it too, right? He realized there that something was a little bit fishy. No Adept has, uh, or sorry, well, an Adept has gone down. No Dark Templar has gone down. And now we gotta start morphing in a few Archons too. So, the DTs were just phase one in this attack. The Archons are gonna be the second layer. In the meantime, the third Nexus was built as well. I mean, we did see the third command center, but... 
Beyond right now, mostly just using it to rebuild some of his workers. Okay, nice strategic decision right here in game number one from Max Pex. I feel like maybe, um, yeah, Dark Templar. Yeah, it, it, it's not the best opener, right? But the reason I like it is... The only real criticism that I saw people have of Max Pex over the last half year or so is that sometimes he can be a little bit predictable. He was just doing the same builds a little bit too frequently. Ooh, really? Yeah, okay. A little risky there, but he was paying attention to it. Just grabbing a few more Marines. But these days, he's mixing it up quite a bit. Which makes him, uh, yeah, a very scary player for sure. Now, you know, I have to say this. I don't know if Max Pex watches any of my videos, but hey, Max, just in case. It would be really cool if you decided to sign up for some offline events, okay? I know you've qualified for many of them, and then you just decide to not show up. It'd be really, really nice. Uh, if you did show and play a couple offline tournaments, man, because for the highest ranked Protoss player in the world to not play offline events really feels like such a missed opportunity. Anyways, I'm sure he's got a good reason as to why. But as a Max Pax fan, I would like to see him, yeah, win some big events. All right, one Stalker has gone down. Second Stalker, yep, will also explode over here. Ooh, I thought the... Prism would surely be making the long way around to join up with those Stalkers and maybe provide some reinforcement, but Max here is just going to town, man. He's only lost two Adepts and two Stalkers up to this point, and Terran really has been slowing down quite a bit throughout this match. All right, now we did have a lot of Gateways. Seven Gateways on the back of this. Not really too committed, however, to the Stalker aggression. Instead, it's gonna be High Templar now on the back of this too, and, well, we're gonna apparently go up to nine Gateways here. No, we're gonna go up to ten, I was gonna say. I thought Max Pex was part of Team Even. Yeah, he is part of Team Even. Having nine gateways, seven gateways, kind of gross, not gonna lie. Everybody knows you have to go from four to six to eight to ten, okay? That's that's the, that's the only acceptable order. Even if it's suboptimal in your build order, seven is, uh, at least when I play Protoss, not an acceptable number. Now, ultimately, the Prism there did get shut down, but, well, the Archons got recalled back home. Biondo, still doing an excellent job, right? So he did lose a bunch of stuff. Sure, he was caught off guard a little bit, but he hasn't really taken any critical damage. He's been doing a good job upgrading his army as well. And with this sort of start, it's not like Max Pax is also going to have very quick, like, Colossi on the back of this. Instead, his splash damage is going to be coming out of those High Templar. And if Bion can actually go across the map within the next, well, as soon as possible, really, he could even go for, like, an all-out drop here. I wouldn't hate it. There's a very good chance he can actually hit the Protoss player before any real splash damage is available. So immediately, yep, this is what Max does. Zealots are going across the map. I don't know if they're going to be able to achieve too much though. Yeah, the observer right here sees exactly what's going on, so he decides to return. But the idea is just to buy as much time as possible, right? Once this upgrade is done, this attack here from our Terran is going to be much easier to hold. And you know what? Just a posturing, apparently, here from Max Pex. He's making himself look like he could easily take on that army. Uh, apparently, the posturing alone is enough here for Bion to back off. He probably assumed that the Sonic Storm upgrade was already finished. Well, now it is, and suddenly that Protoss army has hit a massive power spike. Fourth Nexus, or actually fifth Nexus here, coming up on the left side of the map as well. Still, though, yeah. Bion right now going into his additional wrecks as well. You should definitely be thinking about adding on, there you go, the Ghosts as well, because the Ghosts are going to be a very helpful tool, especially against Archons, Zealots, and High Templar, which is basically this entire army. Wouldn't mind seeing it. EMP is just such a powerful ability against all of those units. There's a chance that Max Pex could attack right now, but he decides to play this pretty conservatively as well. Mostly just using this main army of his. Ooh, to almost create like an opportunity for those zealots on the right side of the map to run in. Same time though, he does re-engage over here at the front. Ooh, okay, Storm not really hitting too many targets so far, but the Terran only has so many more locations to run to. The ghosts here are being picked up as well, at least temporarily, by the Medivac. This is looking suddenly like an amazing fight though here for Max Pax. Blinking forward right now as well. Gets rid of that last Viking. There's still one storm, maybe two storms available here. Yeah, there's enough energy for a second one as well. Where are we gonna land it? Oh my god. We're blanketing it on top of all of those biological units. And just like that, Max Pax absolutely destroyed Bjorn in about a minute. Okay, 
our next game, we find ourselves on the map Site Delta. Bjorn, usually very well known for his unit control. He's one of the best micro players in all of StarCraft 2, but he just got outpaced right there in the last minute of the previous game. Interesting, huh? All right. So, game number two. We are on Site Delta, which is a lot more of a standard map. No proxy barracks going up on the other side. No proxy uh, gateway either. Back in the day, we had that max packs built. Some of you may remember the Beastie Cutie video all those years ago. That's like maybe five years ago or so at this point. Uh, but uh, a young Max Pex stormed onto the scene with a very cheesy opener where you go pylon into pylon into gateway, which makes absolutely no sense, but it was very good at the time. And honestly, it's still really good as well. If the Terran decides to autopilot into a command center on the low ground, because you would basically go pylon in the main base, pylon on the other side of the map, gateway right next to it, you could continuously produce probes, and then at the same time you could, well, send a zealot in and usually, at the very least, delay that command center for a long time. At the cost of a gateway, if you can get the kill, on a, like, that's massive, for obvious reasons. That's really, really nice. Anyhow, not the case anymore, not really a build order that we see very often anymore. I kind of assumed that that was going to be like, you know the highest level that Max would be climbing to, and I don't mean that with any disrespect, it's just that, you know, being a cheesy high-level player and being a top-level player are very different things. It's the same whenever, like, I don't know, you, you can, for example, cannon rush your way to high masters pretty easily, right? But at that point, I mean, I don't want to be a dick about it, but you're kind of bad at the game. Yeah, no, all you can do is just build a bunch of photo cannons on the other side of the map. I understand it's a, it's an acquired taste, and maybe I just don't have the flavor palette for it, but like, you know, there's hitting a certain level, and then there's hitting a certain level, right? There's uh, loads of layers of depth to a game of StarCraft, and you can simplify it to, well, just your one go-to strategy and execute that in every single game. But when you want to beat the very best, like for example, Bjorn, you have to be able to play that, well, strategic game, right? Probably not much of a surprise there, that in a strategy game, you have to be able to play the strategy game. But yeah, the truth is that really only strategy becomes, well, I want to say mostly relevant at the highest level. Everybody else below that, you and me, if we go up against Max Pax or Bjorn, we would get absolutely destroyed just by the amount of stuff that they make. And I have played tens of thousands of games. And mechanically, I feel like I'm pretty strong, but not quite at their level. If you ever have the, uh, the chance to play a, a game of StarCraft against a professional gamer, I remember the first time I faced against, I think this was like Stevano or something in like... Maybe late Wings of Liberty or like early Heart of the Swarm. As, by the way, we once again are going into Dark Templar. It's an interesting one. Max Specs just DT rushing every game. I remember one thing that I noticed. I thought I was playing a pretty decent game. I was just doing a good old standard macro opener. And then the very first timing attack came across the map with like seven more roaches than I was used to. And I realized, wait a second. Nothing has really happened in this game, and you have like 20 supply more than me? How in the world did that happen? And that's usually the moment where you realize, yeah, mechanics, just being better at doing things faster and more optimally and not hitting supply blocks and making sure you're continuously on top of all of your injects and all the rest of it, right? Just that base alone, just that foundation of StarCraft can carry you incredibly far. Anyhow. It's once again, while I'm blabbering onwards, basically the exact same opener here from Max Pax with a very small amount of deviations. I think the third Nexus may be ever so slightly quicker. Other than that, it's mostly the same build. We have three gateways once again, and I guess we're gonna warp in some DTs. I guess that Max Pax looked at that previous game and he's like, you know what? Not impressed with the way you defended that. And this time around, the engineering bay hmm, is not done yet. There is not gonna be any detection other than a scan available, but usually at this phase in the game, there's mostly just gonna be a single scan. So Dark Templar in the main, Dark Templar in the natural. Dark Templar can be used defensively as well though, so... I mean, yeah, you can scan against these units if you want to, there you go, but that's the only scan. That's the only scan you're gonna get, so defensive Dark Templar are gonna be absolutely amazing. That's a bit of a... 
<laughs> That's a bit of a weird situation, but ultimately Jimmy over there did get sliced up and the same can be said right now for the SCVs on the low ground. I think Max Max has spotted a vulnerability in his opponent's play. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing some... Can we just warp in a couple DTs over here? This is a bit awkward now, isn't it? Uh, Max Max? We have one gateway currently powered. We're still killing SCVs. One DT is coming up. But he's gonna take a little while. Yeah, now we have another scan out. Um... All right, ultimately these gateways are going to be available again. For some reason, this game just became so much harder than it needed to be. All Max really needed to do was just sprinkle in like one Dark Templar over here and just send it after that bio army. Anyways, that's 24 probes going down. I feel like that's like about 20 probes too many. Um, so now the game has mostly just been reset a little bit, right? I mean, the main downside right here for Bjorn is that he never made a third command center. So this is one of those triple Rex openers where... You decide to march across the map pretty aggressively. Yeah, I mean, he can march again, but he still does not have a reliable answer against Dark Templar, because without a triple CC opener, you just don't have enough stuff. Hmm. Here he goes again, though. I don't know if these guys realize it, but there's ninjas out there. I know you guys are marching across the map in broad daylight, but there's ninjas out on the map. They're invisible, but they still wear capes. If I was invisible, guess guess what I would wear, huh? Guess guess what I would wear if I was uh, an invisible Dark Templar. Anyways, we're gonna continue that Archon harassment over here. If Max Pex picks up on the fact, well, he's gonna pick up on the fact right now that there's a large army missing. If he would have picked up on it a little bit earlier, I think he would have already warped in a defensive DT. Still though. Oh, so many low HP. Oh, dude, both of those Archons had like. Just scraps for health remaining. Is this, is this gonna come at the cost of that third Nexus and quite a few probes as well? Interesting decision making right here by Max. I don't think I'm I'm as big of a fan of this one. Oh no, don't lose those units. It's one immortal. I mean, the firepower of that immortal is pretty nice. We do have backup pylon power. Can we just warp in some defensive Dark Templar? What's going on? I mean, Bjorn at this point did save up a couple scans, I guess. Now he's got two of them. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think this was really meant to happen, but it's Bjorn who obtains the victory. That was a bit of a head-scratcher, wasn't it? Honestly, also clever play though from Bjorn, because he obviously realized there that if he decides to just sit back and play the macro game, he's gonna be in a world of trouble. So he decided to just well, save up energy on his command centers and march that army across the map. And he managed to do that now for the second time in one game, completely unscouted, which is a little bit strange. Ultimately though, it was definitely his best chance to win and he managed to get it done. But if Max Pex had seen it, he could have just warped in one Dark Templar, send it in, force the scan, warp in another Dark Templar, run it in, well, force the scan, and then by the time that Terran finally comes across the map, there's, there's not, yeah, there's nothing. He's just not gonna be able to see the invisible men. Hmm. So are we gonna Dark Templar rush three games in a row, Max? That's the question I have right now. I don't think it's, I mean, hmm. I'm saying I don't think I like it, but the, the thing is, it's not like Bjorn's response has been excellent so far throughout this game. What is really interesting uh, as well, though, is that I have casted quite a few of Cure's Terran versus Protoss games lately. I think Cure's TVP is the best in the world right now, even better than, for example, Maru's. And, well, there's one thing you may notice with Cure's opener, and that is that he usually goes for a Raven. So maybe this is Max Pex looking at Bion's opener over the last couple of games that they've played against one another. I mean, not in this series, but before this series. And he's like, yo, it seems like Bion may just be a little bit allergic to one of the very best units in the game. Maybe he's enjoying the triple rex opener of his a little too much. I can actually get a good amount of work done. All right, so what are we gonna do this time around? It's once again gonna be the Twilight Council, I would imagine. We don't really have the gas to make a transition towards anything else. Could also be a robo facility first, but that's also just a little bit strange. Not a Stargate though. Stargate being 150 gas, it doesn't really line up with anything. Alright, now Bjorn wants to figure out what he's playing against as well. 
Problem is, yeah, there's no tech for him to scout anyways. So there it is. It will indeed be that Twilight Council. Three out of three games. And Bjorn is gonna get a glimpse of it as well. It'll be the last thing that that uh, a Reaper saw, but solid micro right there coming out of our Terran player. Cyclone on the back it is too. I really would not mind seeing a tech lab and a starport and just making one Raven. Maybe two Ravens. It's so useful. Not just with the interference matrix upgrade, which is where we usually see it being used, but also obviously as a detector and, well, in those last couple of games I've casted featuring Cure, when he went up against Maples, we saw that there's a lot of value as well in the anti-armor missile, even in the earlier stages of the game. But I guess that mostly just works whenever the Protoss is not paying very close attention. Anyhow, it is gonna be a second barracks though. So once again, we're not gonna have any mobile detection in this game, at least not early on. And judging here by the way that Bion is opening up, I don't think he will be transitioning into it right now either. But this is a bit of a different timing here from Xpex, right? So he is gonna go into that blink upgrade. How many gateways are we gonna make in total? Looks like it's gonna be three for the time being. Three with a robo facility. If he wants to go completely all in with this, or at least be very committed to the aggression, usually he would make four gateways. So three is, yeah. You can open up with like a, a double gate start and take a third nexus nice and early. Four is like a lot more all in-y. Third is like, yeah, when you have three gates, it's, it's kind of like, ah, I can deal damage, but I can also defend at home and I can also expand behind it. It's sort of like the middle of the road approach because you do have the ability to warp in quite a few units. We also have the ability to take an expansion if you want to, and it looks like that is what Maxpex is going to be going for here. Another build. Oh, nice snipe over here as well from Beyond. Lovely work. Another thing that we've seen a lot from Terrans lately, and what the StarCraft community has been incredibly vocal about, is those Widow Mind drops. I don't know if you have ever visited the StarCraft 2 subreddit over the last few months, but, uh... Well, there was a phase, mostly like a couple weeks ago, I guess, where people were just discussing the Widow Mines at length. And that, that went on for like two months, ever since... Well, it, it, it was a long time. Um, Bjorn also doesn't really seem to be a Widow Mine dropper kind of guy, right? So no Raven opener, no Widow Mine drops. Both of which are kind of interesting, because in my mind, those builds are really solid. Anyways, Cyclone is gonna get a glimpse right over here of that newly made Protal structure. Probes are gonna come across right now too, and that's right at the point where Maxpex is ready to start dealing some damage on the other side of the map. There's already three tanks out though. I wouldn't mind maybe having a group of Stalkers as distraction in the main base, or maybe in the natural and then the prism in the main, so you can try and sneak around, snipe some of those SCVs that are mining some minerals. Bjorn sees this coming in right now. He doesn't know about the Stalkers over here, but he did prepare some units in advance. Can we pick up those units? Okay. Not really getting a whole lot done. Stalkers over here. Yeah, also not really achieving that much. But again, this is not a committed all in version of this opener here from Max Pax. So any damage that he gets here is pretty nice. The thing is, though, it came at the cost of a Stalker. Yeah, three SCVs for a Stalker is... Still a slightly favorable trade, I suppose, here for the Protoss, but nothing really to write home about. Alright. It's gonna be that uh, Concussive Shells upgrade right here for the Terran. We have the Shields for the Terran Marines coming up as well. The Combat Shields and then the plus one infantry weapon, so... These upgrades are gonna finish up eventually. Stimpak is already done, I was gonna say. You gotta be very cautious here with the Prism, because you may assume that Stimpak is not yet available. And if you accidentally overextend, that makes the game very hard. You know what you could have done as well, rather than scan? Get a Raven! Okay, sorry, sorry. I'll shut up about the Raven now, but... Curious build order decisions, though, here from Bjorn. So the reason why Bjorn does it is that he can... Oh, he can create a tremendous army. Yeah. So this attack of his is gonna hit like a truck. This is a lot of units, right? So the reason why he's cutting all of that early game protection and all of those early game units in general is just so he can muster up this really large army. And Bjorn usually ends up winning games just microing these units. Now, again, signature max specs move over here. Whenever Terran does a move out, he's gonna be in the main base of the opponent. Buying time here is huge because anytime he buys is gonna allow him more here to, well, get another warping going, maybe even get a Colossus started, that sort of thing. Can we get a force field? 
Like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't hate that force field. I think it could have been slightly better, but... Still, grabbing a couple of those units is not bad whatsoever. And the Prism, once more, buying time. Colossus, Chrono boosted out. John, right now, very busy chasing around this Prism. And in the meantime, that bio army of his is sitting on the Watchtower. Fair enough. Colossus, right now, halfway finished. We're Chrono boosting out a Robo Bay that's not upgrading anything. Probably meant to be starting up the uh, extended Thermal Lens upgrade already, but probably didn't have the resources for it. And hasn't looked back at the structure since then, but ultimately, that's a perfect deflection right there from Max Max. He fires up the fourth Nexus here. There's the extended Thermal Lens. We do sort of need that one. A little bit of a supply block, but Pylon is already finished. So let's once again go into town. It's some pretty Protoss gameplay, man. Really good stuff. It's just also clean, you know? Like, I feel like most of the Protoss games that I cast these days are Protoss players kind of just cheesing very hard or, well, playing very chaotic matches. And there's a little bit of that going on as well in this particular series, but overall, it seems like Max Specs is in control of everything. Very calculated. Just scouting the opponent and then taking the next branch in his strategy. Dependent on what he has been scouting. And well, we are gonna get Dark Templar, it seems, three out of three games so far. But this time around in this third game, it's not gonna be in the same way. One zealot for a widow mine, not bad at all. Colossi though, yeah, they're gonna be nice. Blink obviously is available. There's only a handful of Vikings available too at this point. Zealot's trying to charge a little bit through the green zone. In the meantime, Zealot's going to town over in the Natural Expansion. Zealot's over here as well, trying to get some work done on those Siege tanks, it looks like. Warping in the main base, too. Max Max has basically opened a tap, and he is just pouring everything that he's got all over Bjorn. Bjorn, being one of the fastest Terran players in the world, seems to be struggling, putting out all of the fires at the same time. I mean, the bio army here is gonna hit like a truck, but it's still busy cleaning up all of these counterattacks. Max Max just sacrificed his heavy hitters, but he's got 75 probes worth of eco. He's gonna build another Nexus. Okay, this is a little extreme, Max. I would not mind seeing you just, well, replace some of those units that you've lost instead here, but I guess we can do both. I guess we can warp in and then at the same time also make another base down south. Honestly, I mean, game number two was a little bit strange. But this has been, uh... Destruction. Yeah. This has been, uh, Max Specs here from start to finish so far. Hmm. Beyond's best chances in this game are to go across the map with his entire army. Problem is, as soon as he leaves, what were previously Zealots <laughs> are now gonna be Dark Templar. Bjorn just really doesn't get a chance to catch his breath in this game, and it's gonna be Max Pax who obtains the victory. Hecate, game number four. Hecate. Hecate. Apparently it's Hecate, which I still do not really like as a map name. I'm not a fan of it, man. Give me blistering sands, give me steps of war, give me Zelnaga caverns. I'll accept, like, Scrapyard Ellie or something, but... Hecate? Really? Giganatha? Equilibrium? Okay, you know what? I kind of like Equilibrium. Yeah, that's a pretty cool name. You know what? I feel like it's kind of working backwards, though. I, I know a lot of the StarCraft commentators have been complaining about the StarCraft 2 map names that we've had over the last couple years, but it seems like every new map pool we get, the map makers are just doubling down on giving us the weirdest <laughs> map names. Maybe it's almost tongue-in-cheek right now, you know, where they're like, you know what? Let's see them pronounce this map name, and they come they come up with Hecate, right? I'm actually kind of excited for the next map pool right now, just to see what the map names are going to be. Will they be better or worse? Because if I was a map maker, right? And, you know, I can imagine that many of them do listen to professional StarCraft casts as well. They must be fully aware of the complaints. I would also name my maps very weirdly, just out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> I would just try to make the sickest map I could make and give it the weirdest name. So hopefully it gets picked for the next map pool and then, well, we'll start it all over again, man. 
To be fair, I will very quickly forget about a map like Battle on the Boardwalks, right? But I will never forget about Jaganatha. Or was it Jaganatha? I don't know. Anyhow, Hecate. Zealot first right here. I'm a fan of Zealot first. I always think it's cool. Unless it gets intercepted in the middle of the map by the Reaper. But it turns out there's not going to be a Reaper in this particular game. Did Maxi Paxi just get confirmation of that? No, not necessarily. It's instead just going to be a straight reactor here for Bjorn. He does have a Marine out, but... Maybe actually the Marine was spotted. Yeah, no, he must have been spotted right here. I was going to say, this is a little bit strange otherwise. Um, Zealot is going to be marching across. Just to try and do a little bit of damage. I mean, you're never really going to be able to get much done, but it's one of those things where it can slow down the Terran a bunch. There's once again, barracks number two and three, so... Bjorn not really going for any of those fancy builds. The thing is, though... Like, his entire early game led up to that one big attack, and then he got slowed down by just a group of zealots, really. He got slowed down by those Blink Stalkers as well. Ultimately, it didn't really lead anywhere good. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of how that went. Adept right now joining in the fray as well, of course. And this is already... Oy, 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 oy. Oh. Not bad here. Already a great start right here for Max. If he can delay this... Oh my god. Oh, he gets it. I think that sacrifice is good. He delayed it one more time. And right now, Bjorn is supply blocked. So you don't just need this command center for the, you know, sake that it's a command center and it gives you economy, but you also need it for supply. So sacrificing the Adept right there to kill ultimately three SCVs is not bad whatsoever. Here's once again that blink opener. How many gates are we going to do this time? Okay, this was a nice catch here, though, by Bjorn. Get it? Oh, no. Ooh, there's no more... Yeah, no, I was going to say, there's no more... No more direction there to run into. Um, so, ultimately, not an awful start right here for Bjorn. Mostly just uh, mentally a little bit painful, you know what I mean? Even though in, in the game, I think it'll be okay. Uh, looks like we're going to go triple gateway once again. There is the robo facility coming up. Bjorn waiting now on the high ground, ready to snipe any more units that decide to get a little bit adventurous, but nothing coming across the map here this time around. Stimpak, combat shields. No plus one infantry weapons or anything like that. Stalkers? Okay, nice catch. Beautiful catch right here by Bjorn. He does end up losing a marine, but I think a marine for a stalker? I mean, don't tell these bad boys, because they probably would disagree, but I think that's a good trait. Third Nexus is going to be coming up here very soon for Max. But maybe Bjorn can get something done, right? So he's ready to march across the map. Immediately. Max Pax clearly is aware of the timing. He decides to go for a full counterattack. Prism is returning home as well. The third Nexus may very well end up going down here if Bjorn decides to target it. But instead we're creating this weird base racy scenario. There are some reinforcing marines. It's really only four stalkers right now. Gonna wall ourselves in fully, apparently. Okay. Now, how much damage can Bjorn deal with this army of his? He decides to recall the stalkers. Stalkers are gonna be back home. Nexus is still around. We have one gateway here running low. Force field, though, looking pretty solid. I don't think Max has shown that third Nexus. No, he has not. Bjorn does not know of it. Accidentally shoots his own Nexus there for just a moment. Now, blinking the stalkers back. Bjorn's gonna find out about this base? Yep. But I think it's already a little too late. Max Pax is the real deal, man. He's got the mechanics, he's got the strategy, he's got... Well, incredible micro. The fact that he saw, right? Let me just reiterate. He had four stalkers. He sees his opponent coming across the map with a Stimpak combat shield timing attack. And he decides to counter with four Stalkers and make a third Nexus and then still hold it with relative ease. Right? Like that in, in, in theory is not the best move. But when you practice this sort of stuff a lot, there... That was really pretty. I mean, I don't know if he's out of the woods just yet though. Because this is still very scary. But it's also, once again, because four Stalkers are occupied to the counter attack.
Okay, this will be shut down. Reinforcing Marines and Marauders are gonna be able to push all of this back, but this is an opener, right? Once again here from Terran with a very late third command center. If we're gonna see a third CC at all. Right now, Maxpex is gonna be able to give him a taste of his own medicine, as now it's gonna be Maxpex who gets to be aggressive. He does not have to worry about any sort of Widow Mine drops that are, I don't know, waiting off of this side of the main base. He's just hitting the opponent with Stalkers. Look at him picking up all the weakened units, blinking them, microing them. Ay, 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 ay. <sighs> I'm getting nerd chills just looking at this Stalker micro. Gonna warp in a few units too, picking them up, dropping them down. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was, that was so hot. Ay ay ay. So he's lost 14 stalkers throughout this game. It wasn't quite flawless. But most of the time, whenever you see a bio army going up against a stalker force like that, it just goes so heavily in favor of the biological units. It's not even, hmm. This is kind of sick, I'm not gonna lie. Maxpex now with a 20 supply lead. At least when I started that sentence. I think he can just win with just pure Stalker. I mean, there's five additional gateways finishing up on the other side of the map. That's gonna give us a grand total of nine, which I don't really like, I'm not gonna lie. Probably a miscalculation right there, my Max. I'll let it slide this time, but... Plus one is gonna finish up. Charge just finished up. We're gonna be going into the Templar Archives as well, so Zealots... Oh, we even picked up those units to protect them from the Widow Mine, all right. Zealots can be coming up nine at a time right now. We've got so much money in the bank. Unless the Prism falls, this aggression is not going to end here anytime soon. GG is cold. And honestly, Max Pax throughout this series, he heavily outplayed Bjorn, one of the greatest Terran players of all time.